angel investors and VC firms. I actually had some good connections that came out of Georgetown, the alumni network. I met some folks via LinkedIn that were able to connect me with people out there. Um, and then as I worked my way down the coast, I was several retail stores and um, surf shops, basically trying to get our product uh, into as many stores as possible. So one of the things that I wanted to talk to you guys about tonight, um, kind of share my experiences, uh, and kind of encourage you to come up with new and creative, innovative ideas. And the biggest piece of advice that I can give to an entrepreneur is to become uh, okay with failure, to accept failure, to understand that going through the process of learning and growing and creating new ideas and challenging the status quo, it involves failing a lot. Like I fail almost every single day. I'm doing so many things that something goes wrong. I mean, uh, Tuesday was actually my first day back in the office and someone broke into my car, shattered my window and stole my pretty bag in the back seat. And I could have been terribly frustrated. I was a little pissed off for a little bit there, but then I reminded myself that one, it was just a material possession and two, the Ravens just won the Super Bowl, so I really couldn't be that. <laughs> And so I think as you go through this process, I think it's important to understand while you're still in your undergraduate years, you have just a wealth of opportunities before you. I mean, there are great classes you can take and there's things you can certainly learn in the classroom, but I really believe it's the stuff you do outside of the classroom, it's the extracurriculars, it's attending events like this, competing in events like this, forming small groups and working on teams with your peers to learn, uh, one, a little bit more about yourself, what your skills are, what your strengths are, and what you're pa passionate about, and what you want to be doing as well as how to kind of um, engage and work with others of different backgrounds and that sort of thing. Um, I think there's a, an idea that I really like, a concept called steal like an artist. And what that basically says is if you uh, if you took the Mona Lisa and you copied it uh, and looked exactly the same, like that's plagiarism. Everybody knows that's the Mona Lisa. But if you take her nose and somebody else's eyes and somebody else's cheeks and do the lighting from all these different paintings, all of a sudden you've created a new work of art that never existed. And I think that's something really great that you can bring to business. Um, I'm constantly looking at so many other businesses to see what they're doing, whether it's on social media, it's their, what are they posting on Facebook, how many likes and comments are they getting, how are they engaging with their community, um, is it uh, different ways that they kind of put their brand in the marketplace, uh, even like commercials during the Super Bowl, like what are the really funny things? Like obviously I'm not going to spend $3 million on a commercial, but I can use my iPhone and film something and throw a little 30 second clip up on YouTube that's pretty funny. Um, so going along with that, uh, I think one of the questions that I get asked a lot with Waveborn is, oh hey, you're just like Tom Shoes, like Tom now has eyeglasses, like Warby Parker has eyeglasses, Hand to Shades is actually started by Vincent Capello and a couple other Georgetown guys. Uh, yes, we have the same business model, but one of the things that I absolutely love about social entrepreneurship is that it's not a zero-sum game. This isn't Pepsi versus Coke. This, this isn't like, oh, you bought their sunglasses, well, we hate you. No, like, well, one, human beings own more than one pair of sunglasses in their life. But but it's not, like, I'm not upset if you buy Panda Shades instead of ours. I'm like, well, that's great. They're an awesome company. They're helping people, too. And like, I'm good friends with Vincent, and we talk about what works well, what doesn't work well. We learn from one another, the other businesses uh, in the marketplace to see how we can grow as a company, how we can grow as individuals, and how we can um, have a larger global impact. And I think one of the great things that's happened in today's connected society with Facebook and Twitter and everybody can like or dislike whatever people are posting, like there's a lot more um, ability for brands to 
important that we also expand our social good component. Like that's at the core of our business model, the core of who we are as a company, and the core of who I am as an individual. Um, so I think it's important to understand that while Wavemore is a for-profit company, uh, we are trying to grow the business and make money and pay some bills and me and all that stuff. Uh, we're certainly interested in, in finding more ways to give back to the global community and sort of be able to work with a full spectrum of site restoring agencies. And the more sunglasses we're selling, the more good we can do. And I think as you guys are starting your businesses, it's important to start small, do a lot of little experiments, try things, see what works, what doesn't work. Um, the key is as you do things and you fail, and even if it's simple failures as um, like trying to ask uh, a mentor to meet with you, but then you don't show up or things like that. Yeah, uh -huh. Whatever the, the small errors you have, it's important you, you learn from them and you move on, and the next time you're in a similar situation, um, you're able to uh, take that experience and then be more prepared for whatever the next thing is happening. Um, I have all sorts of different things going on uh, from week to week, but I am constantly learning, even though I'm out of school, I'm reading every day. I'm following all sorts of blogs and personal development things. Uh, I do a fair amount of writing. I actually just published my first book this week. Um, which was a pretty huge accomplishment for me. I, I spent about five months working on that. Uh, I'll tell you a little bit about it. The, the book's actually called Becoming So Good They Can't Ignore You. Uh, and it was inspired by one of my computer science professors over in St. Mary's. Uh, he just published a book last year called uh, So Good They Can't Ignore You, Why Skills Trump Passion in Finding Work That You Love. Um, and that book really resonated well with me and it meant a lot to me. And what I did is in that book, it talks about why following your passion is bad advice. You don't just wake up, you don't know as a sophomore in college, oh, I'm really passionate about giving it. Like, this is what I'm going to do for the next 40 years. Um, if you would ask me sophomore year, I said I was going to be a computer programmer who made video games. Um, instead, I ended up consulting for the government, and now I have a master's in computer science and sell sunglasses. Um, <laughs> not the typical career path, but I think that's kind of the whole point of it, is if you put your head down and you work hard and you focus every day on sort of stretching yourself outside of your comfort zone, not just doing the things that you know how to do. If you can take a calculus test and ace it every time, well then maybe you need to take abstract algebra um, and find new areas of subject that you can learn. Um, and as you're kind of getting better, you, you acquire more rare and valuable skills, you trade those in 